Welcome to this edition of Assembly Update. I'm Mike Frieson. With us for our program today, representing Erie and Niagara counties, the 144th Assembly District, Assemblyman Mike Norris. Mike Norris, uh, it is a pleasure to have you here with us as we uh, here in Albany are getting ready to shut down already. It seems like we just got started to shut down the 2023 legislative session. How about that? Listen, I always say that's very good news for the taxpayers of Western New York because the longer that we're here with the downstate driven majorities uh, from New York City and uh, Long Island, uh, it's better for us, trust me. And I've been here now my seventh year. It's a privilege to represent the people of Western New York, but I'm also grateful each and every time the session ends because there's, there will be less havoc on the people of Western New York uh, because quite frankly, most of the legislation that's coming out of here, with the exception of local bills, is not helpful to the economy uh, or to the people of Western New York. I want to ask you today in our remaining time here together in Albany about some bills that you're interested in getting passed before the end of this legislative session. Also, some of the top issues of the day, and I think we have to start with what is uh, making headlines all across this state, and that is all these illegal immigrants that are coming into New York City from down south from the southern border. And now we're hearing stories about some of those immigrants being shipped out of New York City into upstate New York, including western New York. What are you hearing about that? Are you finding this happening in communities that you represent? Well, we are just hearing rumors right now that they might be coming to a western New York in terms of our SUNY campuses, uh, particularly Buff State, waiting for the announcement uh, from the governor on that, potentially. But let me be clear about this. The, the, this is a failed policy of, of President Biden and his administration to how they could allow these unvetted uh, migrants uh, come to come to our, our country in the first place without very proper criminal background checks, health background checks, and we don't know where these people are coming from. And this has a, a serious concern of mine and the people of my district that these individuals are gonna potentially come to Western New York um, unvetted, unchecked, and then in addition to place a financial burden on the state taxpayers uh, as well as the federal taxpayers. So I have very serious concerns about this. I oppose them. But I also wanna mention at our Republican conference here in the assembly, led by our great leader, Will Barkley, we put out a plan about two weeks ago already to address the situation. And that would uh, include to make sure that these unvetted migrants do not uh, go to our SUNY campuses, our other community organizations uh, within uh, Western New York or uh, any place in New York, quite frankly, because they're unvetted, particularly with the health, uh, we don't know what type of diseases that might be coming here. We don't know what their background is in terms of uh, criminal criminality. Uh, who are they connected to? Um, so we have that. And then to make sure we have an audit done in if, in fact, they do come to New York, uh, that we know they're in New York City, but other places and there are state resources being put in there to, to have an accounting to the state legislature to how much money it's costing the taxpayers of the state of New York, and then have it audited by our comptroller. So there's full transparency and to make sure that uh, we know exactly the amount of funds that are being done. Listen, over the weekend, I received a email from a taxpayer in my district saying, you know, my taxes are too high in New York. My school property taxes are out of control. What, why are we providing unvetted illegal immigrants to come migrants, to come to our area when we need help ourselves. And you know what? I thought that was very interesting when I got that email because, listen, our country, again, was founded on immigrants coming to our country, but they come here legally. They come here with proper vetting, with proper background checks, and that's how our country was founded. And what I'm saying is that we need to make sure that we have those checks in place and uh, quite frankly, under the failed administration of President Biden, that is simply not happening. And we need to make sure we take care of the taxpayers who have paid over the years and are here legally first uh, before we help others. 
I think most New Yorkers watched what was happening at the southern border like it wasn't really something that they needed to think about twice. It was happening down there and it wasn't happening here, but now it's happening here. For goodness sakes, they had the idea in New York City that they were going to put some of these people uh, up to stay in school gymnasiums next to elementary school kids. I mean, I mean that's a, a, arguably a worse thought than putting them in the SUNY uh, dormitories, which is, I, I don't think that makes much sense either, frankly. It doesn't make any sense. Listen, our students are still there. Even in the summertime, we have athletes, we have staff, we have people for summer school. They are gonna be on these SUNY campuses uh, our, our, and near our schools where we have elementary schools. It's outrageous. It's outrageous because the fact of the matter is they have been un, truly unvetted. We don't know their criminal history, their health history. That's what concerns me. And until they go through all of the proper checks and make sure they come here properly and legally, uh, I have very serious concerns because quite frankly, we need to make sure that we protect our community. You know, we've talked a lot about bail reform. And again, I think that the recent changes of bail reform in the, in the budget was just window dressing. But again, it's about the safety of our communities. It's about protecting one another who are here properly. And just th uh, to have these individuals coming to our upstate communities without being vetted properly is a deep concern to the public health and safety of our communities. I know the New York State Thruway is back in the news as well for a couple different reasons right now. One of them being you know, there's a lot of griping going on by motorists in Western New York that a lot of the stops are shut down. I mean, I understand there's renovations going on, but there's some consternation, I guess, uh, at those places, uh, those rest stops that are still operating, still in service. The lines are long and it's just a, a headache for a lot of motorists right now at the it's, wrong time of year. Mike is a disaster right now. I can tell you, I have to take the three-way each week, you know, coming to Albany and then back home. Uh, and it's a privilege to do so because I represent the people of the 144th district. Uh, but I can tell you firsthand from being on these three-way, on the three-way and visiting these stops, uh, first of all, they're, they're way too small. Uh, I see uh, the lack of space uh, for our families to sit down and have their meal, you know, to take a rest for proper uh, bathroom facilities, for example. Now, in the short term, I, I, listen, these three-way stops need to be renovated. The, I, I know this because I traveled under the old ones and they really need to be freshened up and redone. So I'm pleased to know that in the long term, they're going to be replaced because, quite frankly, the uh, three-way stops is is the first impression, oftentimes, that our tourists see of New York State. I know when I travel to Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and other places, when I'm traveling through, that's the first impression that I see. So it's important that we have them. Uh, we have them all redone and fully functional and operational. I also want to say, in my communications with the Thruway Authority, that when uh, the larger facilities are actually put fully operational uh, based upon the data points of 10 years of history of uh, the numbers who actually stopped at these particular locations. It will be better and the flow will be better. However, in the short term, this is having an adverse effect on our tourism season. And quite frankly, I'm very disappointed in the Thruway Authority about how these were rolled out. I mean, yesterday, there was like one stop for 100 miles, and there were facilities that have been are shut down. This was poor planning, and it needs to be addressed for the future, and that's what I intend to do, to make sure they're aware um, that when they have to do this 35 years from now, when I'm long out of office, that there is an actual plan in place to make sure that these things are, are dealt with um, you know, for the for flow to be much better. So again, in the short term, very disappointed, but in the long term, I know it's gonna be better for the uh, tourism and for our, our commuters on the long the throughway. Well, you talk about poor planning. How about uh, ticking off a whole lot of Western New York throughway commuters at a time 
when the uh, the thruway authority is coming to the legislature saying we need to increase the tolls we need to increase the tolls we need more money probably for all those renovations they're doing of the, the the rest stops but uh and it comes a question that was asked uh, of the state controller how is everything going with the thruway authority apparently this uh new cashless toll taking that they rolled out a couple of years ago it's not doing so well not doing well at all and I, uh, kudos to the buffalo news for running a, an article over the weekend uh, to explain the controller's report that over $217 million uh, of unpaid uh, tolls are out there and nearly half from out of state commuters uh, over the past couple of years. I thought these uh, electronic tolling system was going to be better in terms of making sure that we collected the tolls and that is not the case. So uh, in the future, I can tell you, I will be asking questions in my capacity as the ranking member of the transportation committee to seeing what proactive measures are they going to now take to recoup these tolls and to make sure that future uh, users of the three-way uh, uh, through way uh, pay their fair share, share when they when they use it and so I will be directing those questions to the director to see what are we doing about the unpaid ones and what are we doing in the future to make sure we're collecting them and get answers. As part, as part of this year's budget talks in Albany the governor had rolled out a plan to expand housing across the state that plan was ultimately rejected as uh, a lot of communities said this would really destroy our sense of community by uh, rapidly and hugely increasing uh, residencies surrounding the rail terminals on Long Island and uh, rail and other facilities in upstate New York. You've got some ideas, uh, and this is, uh, goes back to the beginning of the show where I mentioned legislation you'd like to see enacted this year uh, of ways to help with housing in New York State. Talk about that, what your bill would do. Yes, you know, I'm often critical of state spending in the state of New York, our population. We lead the country in population loss. Uh, we have uh, out of control spending at $229 billion. We've raised the state budget over $56 billion, actually $64 billion now in the last five years under the downstream driven majorities. I've opposed every one of those. But when you talk about budgets, you talk about priorities. I do talk about investments because originally, uh, how our, our, our forefathers wanted to make sure we had investments in our community, into our, our transportation system, into our national defense, our national guard. I'd look at it in today's world as are making sure we protect our infrastructure, our learning for work uh, task force, for example, making sure we put skills together with, with individuals to get a good paying job and into a reinvestment into our housing stock. Now, I did oppose the governor's plan because the governor's plan, quite frankly, ripped away local control. Individuals have moved to a community because they like the community and their character of the community. And they don't want to be told by the state of New York how to put in housing in their community. But with that being said, I thought it was important to offer an alternative plan. So my alternative plan, after talking to many individuals, elected officials, economic development people, particularly in the city of Lockport, uh, which I represent uh, to expand our small cities housing, for example, grants. Because what we have found out is that many individuals, they cannot afford to live here. They barely can afford their property taxes. They would love to reinvest in their house, but they can't afford to do that. So what I have proposed is there's a federal small city grant program to actually expand that program, run a parallel and to make investments to, in, to increase the number of houses that could be real, current housing, could be uh, rehabilitated uh, uh, on the outside, for example, whether it be their porch, their sidewalks, their uh, driveway, uh, their sidings, uh, the, uh, the roof to be replaced, and to make sure that we make these reinvestments. But unfortunately, when I put the plan forward to the housing committee, the majority decided to hold my plan for future consideration. And I was quite disappointed about that because this is a common sense proposal which would help 53 small cities which have less than 100,000 people reinvigorate themselves, re-energize themselves, and invest, make key investments. These are good dollars 
because it will increase the housing stock. It will then increase you know, the value of homes all around it, and, and, and indirectly will make sure that the property taxes are paid. So I consider this to be a no-brainer. Disappointed in the majority for holding it, but maybe next year we could tackle it again to bring forward this very good idea because it's all about investment. And we hear a lot about housing. We hear a lot about how we have to create new housing. Well, we have existing housing that needs to be renovated, and these are good homes, uh, and we need to make sure we do that. So I will continue to fight for that plan. We're out of time. You taught us right up to the end. Uh, just enough time to let the folks know that they can contact their representative in Albany by contacting him at his office in Clarence. You can drop an email to norrism at nyassembly.gov or call the office at 716-839-4691. And we thank Mike Norris for joining us and taking time out of his schedule. We thank you folks watching for doing the exact same thing. We'll hope to see you soon for our next Assembly Update.